here is a hash map in Java that stores an integer as the key and a string as the value. Simple. Now, here is the same hash map storing a string as the key and a custom node class as the value. As a matter of fact, I can store whatever object I want in the hash map as a key or a value, provided it's a valid object. Interesting, right? The question then becomes, how does the hash map class work under the hood, allowing us to store any data type we want? The magic behind this flexibility is generics. Generics lets us write reusable code that can work with any data type while still being type safe. Here's how it works. Let's say we want to create a simple container class that can store an object of any type. The code for that will look something like this. Everything looks familiar except we've replaced where we would put a data type with T. This way, the data type that's passed into the class will be enforced at compile time. Generics also work for methods as well. The method shown here will print the element in an array that's passed into it regardless of the type of data in the array. This is because we've replaced the data type with T, meaning the method will work for an array of any type of object. Generics aren't just a Java thing. They're also a feature in C Sharp, Rust, and TypeScript. C++ uses templates. It's a different name, but very similar execution. The whole idea is to make code reusable and type safe. If you want a more in-depth explanation and other scenarios, check out the full YouTube video. As always, follow Umacodes for more programming videos like this and head over to prodev.umacodes.com for the coaching program.